Welcome once again. Before we just made a video about something called VCM, vehicle control module. Now it's the same theory, but they swipe the name to PCM, powertrain control module, the main computer. It doesn't matter the, the terminology used. The idea is always this is the main computer. Like we just discussed before. Like I said, this is using the, the Haynes and the Chilton uh, books, which were, for those times, those were excellent, excellent schematics. Very good for beginners, as you can see. Everything is right in front of you. However, like I stressed before, no pin numbers. You don't see one, two, three, four, five, six, which is not good because you want to find the pin numbers. So, like we said, let's start with what's the first thing if you believe you have a computer model that's not good? What's the first thing of any sensor that you look for, any computer module that you look for? Always look for... B plus. What's B plus? B plus is the main voltage that's feeding that component. Whether it's a sensor, whether it is a computer module, whether it is a trans a transmission control module, a body control module, you have to have the supply voltage to it. That's the rule. Now, we st we, st we stressed before IGN is the B plus line. See this to this over here. ECM be over here fuse 20 amps hot at all times so we have one two so far two pins but 12 volts 12 volts from the fuse 12 volts the other side to feed two points so far let's go to this fuse ECM one fuse 10 amps you go over here we have another one we have so far we have three with 12 volts giving the, the computer uh, module three volts let's go to another one ign if you trace it it comes back to also another fuse one two three four we have two b pluses we have two ignitions four wires for connections from fuses giving 12 volts so one two three four four connections for four and each one 12 volts for each one okay now so if I think I have a problem with this PCM and I'm going to go to the orange wire and I'll say, okay, you know what? I don't think I, I, there's no communications. You put in your scanner, your code reader, and it says you something, whatever it is. No communication. I cannot communicate to who? I cannot communicate to him, to him, because I want to find out what's going on. It's like the black box in an airplane. Gives information, Right. What was going on in the airplane? This is the information. What's going on in that vehicle? We have to retrieve that information. But I put on my scanner, my call reader, what my snap, whatever scanner I have, I cannot communicate to it. So I'll say, okay, let me go find an orange wire. Okay. I go over here and I measure 12 volts. Okay. Fine. I said, okay, the computer module is good. Is that correct? Did I make a good assumption? No. You, there's four volts, four of these. That means there are many, many modules and circuitry, like I showed you those boards on those videos. If you go to my channel, Joe, I'm trying to schematics for auto. There are many, many circuitry, many, many modules in here contained in one computer module that you see. This is just a rough schematic pictorial for you however like i showed you in that video the chips the uh, uh everything they can they need sometimes three four 12 volts to go to different circuitries in that module you could have one uh, um one one um, um chip getting 3.3 volts another one five volts obviously they're broken down from 12 volts to 5 volts, 12 volts, to 3.3 volts. They're broken down to those chips. Therefore, you don't only use one. You can use four. So I have no communications. I'm thinking to myself, I'm good when I just went to this one. No, that's a bad assumption. You have to go to all, anywhere you see B+, to, to play it safe, they call it. Measure 12 volts each one. Because I don't know which 
is feeding which circuitry and it's not it's not even relevant to me which is feeding which the the most important is i have a ground and i have f four working 12 volts at the orange 12 volts at the orange 12 volts at the pink 12 volts at the pink okay that's to play it safe to make sure everything is working because you i can have 12 volts here these could be zero volts what happens if this fuse blue right i come over here i think oh easy ecmb fuse 20 amps is the fuse blown that's why i don't have any communications and the, and there's no start i can't start the car because the computer is not working oh the fuse is the problem right so i'll go over here i'll say okay let me go to the orange wire it's good here i have 12 volts here that means in the next one will be good not necessarily how about if you have the wire is broken it could be that you can have 12 volts and the fuse is good and you'll say okay well it's connected to the same fuse so if this one is good this one must be good not necessarily that wire might be broken the second wire so again the same thing over here if i have 12 volts to these two and this one is blown guess what i lose this one the the the, the pink one the third one now with crankshafts and like we spoke about first thing ignition what do i what do i think 12 volts when i see ign 12 volts a sensor what's the first thing that comes to my mind ign 12 volts same thing who's giving 12 volts to him is the sensor giving 12 volts to, to the computer or is the computer giving 12 volts to him or 5 volts whatever it has to be if you see ignition that means he's giving him the b plus voltage so he's getting the 12 volts or some says it's a five volts so he's giving him the voltage he's feeding him the reference low think of it as a ground from the computer so we have those two main things on the connector what are we missing a signal notice over here they didn't say signal they just said crankshaft that will th throw you off this is another sensor called a knock sensor but it said signal here it didn't say it so you see how you can have different wording wording terminal different terminology that's what's going to confuse it's going to throw you off so basically this is a signal feedback He's giving information, feedback to who? To the computer. So this is an input to the computer. You see how you have to derive and have knowledge. It's just not enough. It's just not enough to understand and read the traces. No, you have to analyze. These things will not be written. It doesn't matter. It, it's not going to say 12 volts, and it's not going to say the the, and it's not going to say anything like, okay, uh, the control line, or things like that. It's not going to show you the 12 volts. I'm putting it in. No schematic will tell you here is 12 volts. No schematic out there. The crankshaft signal. Is going into, into here. That's why I put these arrows. That means it's coming from here to here. He's transmitting. <coughs> excuse me. He is transmitting, <coughs> and he's receiving. He's the receiver. <coughs> so therefore, no schematic will tell you this. <coughs> and this is the zero volts from this. Twelve volts and zero volts. So if I ask you which line is a twelve volt line, the feed line, you're supposed to say, <coughs> you're supposed to say, the light green. The light green wire is the 12 volts. If I ask you which is the the return line, the reference line, you're supposed to say this one, the yellow and the black. If I ask you which was the signal feedback to the computer, the blue and the white. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You don't have this information. I draw these things in to make it simpler. Okay, so again, how many B pluses do I have going to this? I have a 12 volts here. How much should I have on the other side? 0 or 12? 12, if it's good. How much should I have here? 12. How much should I have here? 12. 
How much should I have here? 12. And here, 12, 4. Okay? Now, the data link connector. Okay? It's called the cigar fuse. Okay? Now, when you put your scanner in or your code reader at pin 16 of that connector that you see underneath the dashboard, 16 terminals, connectors, pin 16 is the B+. Plus. This will go to B+. Plus. B+, plus has to be 12 volts on pin 16. If you do not have that, you're not going to have communications. Okay? Remember that. It's not the scanner. It could be the, 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 the fuse or the wire going to that connector. That's the problem. So, right away... Just never find fault with the, the, the uh, with the scanner. Let you, if you have a five thousand dollars scanner and you put it in, you say, "Oh boy, I'm not getting any communications to the computer." Oh boy, this this I just paid five thousand dollars for this scanner. N not necessarily. You have to take a voltmeter and you have to go here and measure B plus. If you don't have B plus over here, scanner is worth is useless, worthless, right at the moment. Okay, so go about it this way. We go part by part by part, part by part. So therefore, like I said before, many, many things over here. Electronic brake control module, okay? Used for ABS. Anytime, anytime that you see this, that means both of these are in a unit. These and these belong to a unit, a module. Everything is a module. Okay, so basically some schematics will have the pin numbers and this one it doesn't, makes it more difficult. Okay, but it is easier to see to the beginner when you can see, you can see the lines. As you can see, you can see the lines. In other words, if I go from here, I go to here, to here. If I go, let's, if I go light blue, where do I go? One goes to one. Light blue goes to light blue. Pink goes to pink. Two goes to two. So they didn't put the numbers over here for the pin numbers for the uh, PCM. But they do put pin numbers over here to this. Why? This is a continuation of here. If I want to follow this light blue line, then I have to look for pin one to one or light blue to light blue. But since there might be a lot of light blues, it's going to confuse you. So you're better off going one to one, two, where's two? Over here. Three to three, a continuation. So let's say if I want if I want to trace pin eight, where is that over here? If you said here, you're wrong. If you said here, you're wrong. Where is pin eight? Right here, purple to purple. If I want to see the continuation of the trace, 13, light green, which one do I go to? Which line? This one. This is 13. So I go here, and I go here for the energy coolant level switch. Okay? They cannot put all these on one page. It has to be continued on different pages. And that's how they go about it. And, and to be honest, it's pretty logical. And it's much more easier this way. So six goes to six, seven goes to seven, eight goes to eight, and you can follow it much easier. The, I like these type of books because it's much easier. As you can see, it's much easier. So if you like the video or you're learning something or you feel that you're acquiring knowledge, please go to my channel, Joel Trans Schematics for Auto. And like I said, you'll see those videos, one I made on the dashboard, the voltage gauge the battery voltage gauge in your dashboard, in your car, gives you the information how much the battery is and how much the charging system is. It's the easiest way of looking at the battery without putting a, a multimeter on it. Okay? So that, that gauge that I made a video on, simple. Just look at the battery voltage. It's at 12 volts. When I go in the morning to start the car, great. Great. Then at 14 volts, the charging system is working. That's one of the ways to look at it. That's not all of the ways. These are computerized alternators. 
Okay? The other one, don't forget about the relays. How to test relays in circuit. I never take a relay out. Here's a relay. Like I told you so many times in every video. I don't understand why people take out the relay and they measure, let's measure 12 volts here. Uh, well, this is ground. Let's measure 12 volts here. Let's measure 12 volts over here. You have to measure it on the load. To me, any component has to be measured on the load. That's when it's under the most stress. That's the true accurate uh, 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 reading that you'll get. It's like taking a starter motor and they take the starter motor, mm -hmm. they give it to AutoZone. When they give it to AutoZone, they test it, Hey, it's great. It works. The automotor, you give it back to the mechanic, wherever it is, puts it back in the car, guess what happens? It doesn't work. Why? Because it wasn't under the load, under the stress. It wasn't giving the torque you needed to when you put the, the, fly, the, the flywheel on it, the crankshaft engine on it. That's more stress. That's the load on it. So whatever was done in auto zone is nothing. Doesn't mean it'll be good in the car. And you'll probably go to the mechanic and say, hey, I just tested an auto zone. How come it's not working over here? Well, it wasn't under a load. It wasn't under a load. So try not to fall for those things. Always put a load on it, whether it's electrical, whether it's mechanical, whatever it is, put the load on it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and thanks. Hopefully, see you soon.